Hello students. So today we will be solving few extra questions of the chapter solar system. The explanation of the lesson is already done along with the questions which were there in the NCERT and now as uh, we have done for all the lessons here also we will be solving few extra questions which are not given in the NCERT but by solving these questions you know the confidence uh, 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 for this chapter will be increased and it will be again a good idea to judge ourselves. So, the first question is take the correct answer. Question number first is take the correct answer. Now, in this the first is here in these questions the options are given and from these options we are supposed to select the one correct option. So, here comes the first question the science of studying the universe is called what is the question children the science the science of studying the universe is called. So, options are also given over here children A is astronomer, B is astronomy, C is genetics and the last one is physics. So, here is the question children the science of studying the universe is called as. So, what it is called as we know it is uh, not physics and genetics and now the two things are there two words are there astronomer and astronomy. Now, the astronomy is the study and the astronomer is the one who studies. So, we uh, will talk about the correct answer now the correct answer is astronomy. So, this is the correct answer for the question number 1. Now, we will move to the second one children. The second question is the pole star is in the constellation of the pole star we have discussed this thing the pole star is uh, we can locate pole star with the help of uh, Arsa minor. So, the pole star is in the constellation of I will just use a color chalk also. The pole star is in the constellation. Which constellation is it in children? So, the options are given over here and the options are Ursa minor, Orion, Ursa major, and D is Meteors. So, we can locate the pole star is in the constellation where it is in it is in which constellation it is in Ursa minor. So, the correct answer will be Ursa minor answer is Ursa minor. Now, we will talk about the third question now and the third one is the large number of rocks that lie between the orbit of Mars and Jupiter are called. So, we will write the question first the, the large number the large number of rocks 
that lie between that lie between the mass and Jupiter. Now we will just check the options what are the options given over here the options are uh, comet then B is satellite C is asteroids and D is meteors. Now, the large number of rocks that lie between the Mars and Jupiter. So, we have discussed that they form a big broad belt between the Mars and Jupiter and what are these? These are also known as the minor planets and they are made up of the rocks uh, and uh, the metallic uh, thing and the correct answer for this is none other than asteroid. So, correct answer for this is children asteroid. So, the correct answer over here is asteroids. Now, we will move to the fourth one. What is the fourth one? It is the morning star is better known as the morning star is better known as the morning star is better known as again we will talk about the options it is Venus, Mercury, Mars or Saturn the options they have given Venus, Mercury, Mars and Saturn. So, we all know that the morning and the evening star rather you know uh, we are not supposed to say it is star but still it is known as stars because it shines there in the sky in the <coughs> morning and the evening time. So, the morning star is better no, known as what it is none other than Venus. So, the correct answer over here is Venus. <coughs> now, we will talk about the fifth one. It is a heavenly body which has light of its own. Uh, it is the heavenly body which has got light of its own. Just think the answer, try to think the answer. Meanwhile, I, when I write the question, the answer should be in your mind. So, it is a heavenly body. It is a heavenly body. which has which has its own light it has <coughs> it is a heavenly body which has its own light <coughs> now we'll talk about the options so the options are galaxy options are galaxy star, planet and moon. Now see galaxy definitely we cannot talk about the galaxy that galaxy has its own light. Uh, planet planet does not has their own light we have read this in the difference while well discussing the difference between the stars and planets also and moon we all know that moon is a non luminous object moon is a non luminous object it does not has its own light then why uh, does it shines that's be, ju just because the sunlight when the sunlight falls on the surface of the moon and it is reflected back this all we have read in detail in the chapter light that why we are able to see the objects what happens when the light falls on the object 
isn't it so uh, the moon does not has its own light it uh, just reflects the sun light sun's light and that is the reason we are able to see the moon but here when we talk about the correct answer star is the one which has got got its own light isn't it answer star star definitely has got its own light now we'll talk about the sixth one now six is uh, one light year is equal to one light year is equal to now in this case we'll write the uh, options again over here a is 9.46 into 10 raised to power 10 kilometer b is 9.46 into 10 raised to power 12 kilometer c is 9.46 into 10 raised to power 14 kilometer and d is 9.46 into 10 raised to power 18 kilometer and we know the correct answer we have also solved this that how does it comes to this value uh, and the correct answer is 9.46 into 10 raised to power 12 kilometers so the correct answer is 9.46 into uh, 10 raised to power 12 kilometer as we all know what is one light year the distance covered by the light in one year and why these distance astronomical distance are calculated in uh, light year because the distance between the two heavenly between the two uh, astronomical body or two heavenly body is very large the distance is very large and this distance cannot be calculated in kilometers or such kind of units it needs certain bigger unit and so the light year is a bigger unit to calculate the distance between the two bodies astronomical bodies and one light year is equal to 9.46 into 10 raised to power 12 kilometers now we'll talk about the seventh one so the seventh question is the sun is a huge ball of very hot gases we all know the sun is a huge ball of very hot gases now they have given the options regarding the gases that which gases are there inside the sun so the option comes with uh, hydrogen and carbon dioxide hydrogen and carbon dioxide the second option they have given uh, that is oxygen and helium oxygen and helium the third option is hydrogen and helium Uh, there is no place over here hydrogen and helium and the last option they have given is oxygen and nitrogen oxygen and nitrogen we all know we have studied this that why the sun is so hot it is a hot ball of fire but what is the reason of being so hot and we know that it has got lot of hydrogen nuclear re reaction takes place continuously in this in the on the surface of the sun and due to the uh, these nuclear reaction what is happening hydrogen combines to form the helium so what uh, what is happening lot of uh, lot of heat is released lot of heat is released when these reactions takes place on the surface of the sun due to this nuclear reactions heat is coming out continuously so what which gases are there children which uh, which are the two gases uh, so th this is hydrogen answer is hydrogen 
and helium. Nuclear reaction takes place in which the hydrogen combines to form helium in which lot of uh, heat is released. So, these are uh, the choose, uh, choose the correct answer we have more 3 and for that I will have to dust the board. So, please note this so that we can move to the next one. Now, we will talk about the 8 one, 8 is the brightest planet in the sky, 8 is the brightest planet in the sky is. So, we know the brightest planet in the sky. Uh, just now we have discussed about the evening and the morning star and both are same and that is Venus. So, the options we will just try to find out the options which are given over here and the options given are Venus and Mars. Mercury and Jupiter and children the correct answer is Venus. Venus is the brightest star which can be seen in the sky, uh, brightest uh, planet I am so sorry. Uh, it is known as morning and uh, evening star also it can be known as morning and evening star and the Venus is what it is the brightest planet. So, that is what Venus. Now, we will talk with the ninth one. Now, the ninth is the planet with rings is. Uh, we have discussed there are few more planets which has got ring, but the prominent rings you know the rings which can be seen and the one which is famous for the presence of the uh, rings. So, the planet which has got ring, the planet with ring is the planet with ring is and let us talk about the options now. The options are Saturn, Mars, Jupiter and Neptune. children the correct answer is what the planets the prominent uh, rings can be seen on the planet or the planet which has got the rings uh, is none other than Saturn. So, here comes the ninth one and the planet which has got ring is, see we have discussed that there are certain other planets also which has got rings, but the planet which is famous for the ring is Saturn. Uh, now, we will come to the tenth one last choose the correct answer and the last one is the major stars of these of this constellation form the body of a hunter is the major star the major star the major star of this constellation form the form the body of hunter is. So, the major stars of this constellation form the body of hunter is that means the constellation first of all what is the meaning of constellation children? Constellation is what the group of stars which forms the pattern which forms the pattern is not it that means they give a shape uh, maybe like the bear maybe like the kite uh, maybe like a hunter. So, they are asking the major star of this constellation form the body of hunter is. Uh, so, uh, the options are Orion, 
Scorpio. Pleiades. And Aquarius. Now the correct answer is So, the major star of this constellation they form the uh, you know structure like the hunter's body. So, it is none other than Orion. So, all these are the choose the correct answer. Now, we will move to the next question and the next question is co question number second and that is fill in the blanks. Fill in the blanks. Now, the fill the blanks will start now. The first one is the great bear constellation is also known as. We know that just now we have discussed the Ursa major uh, you know the what is the meaning of constellation first of all the constellation is a group of star which forms a particular pattern in the sky. Maybe like the uh, it looks like the bear maybe the kite maybe the cup maybe hunter maybe Scorpio and um, so these are known as constellation and here the question is the great bear constellation is also known as that means the other name of the great bear constellation is. So, that is what Ursa major we know that Ursa major looks like the great bear and even it looks like the kite even it looks like the cub with a big handle. So, the first is the great bear constellation is also known as it is also known as Arsa Major Arsa Major. Now, uh, we will talk with the second fill the blank. The dash comet can be seen from the earth every 76 year. We know what is comet earlier the comet used to be taken as the misfortune you know that people used to think that if the comet is seen that means uh, anything uh, uh, like you know something will go wrong. It is not a good sign it was taken as a bad luck, but then uh, slowly it was known that these are the as the other other things the other heavenly bodies are present in this space in the same in the universe in the same way these are also the heavenly bodies. Now, these move in the elliptical orbit elliptical way they move in ellipt elliptical path and the Halley's comet is the one which appears in the 76 years uh, every 76 year it appears and it can be seen with a long tail and the tail always uh, is in the opposite direction to the sun. So, the second one is the Halley's comet. the Halley's comet I have written with the white chalk only uh, can be seen can be seen from the earth in every in every 76 years. Now, we will talk about the third one. The first artificial satellite put by India was that was Aryabhatta and we know the use of artificial satellite why the artificial satellites are uh, very very useful because they are uh, helping us to know much about maybe about the weather maybe about the position of the other uh, bodies in the sky maybe about the you know. Uh, or uh, you know the uh, the things which are just uh, 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 you know very can be very helpful like maybe the the position of the enemies maybe about the crops 
and best part is it is helping in the broadcasting you know the when we the when we use the telephones and the for uh, the fax machines and all this thing so in that the artificial satellites play a major role again the mobile televisions radio all these work because of the artificial satellite so what is the work of artificial satellite just they a uh, different different artificial satellite help us in different ways some is responsible for giving us information about the uh, weather some uh, are responsible for uh, giving helping in you know uh, remote sensing and like ways so artificial satellite is very very important for us and the indian uh, sent or the satellite the first artificial satellite which was sent by india is aryabhatta mm, so this one is third one the first the first artificial satellite the first artificial satellite uh put by india put by india was aryabhatta and this was done in 19th april 1975 now uh, along with this bhaskar and apple and insert the series of insert all these are also very important artificial satellites now we'll talk about the fourth fill in the blank and that is dash emits their own light dash emits just now we have discussed that planet cannot emit their own uh, light even the artificial satellite cannot emits so the one which emits their own light are what they are stars either the dear star to the earth is sun isn't it sun emits continuously lot of heat and light so stars emit what was the question their own light their own light now we'll talk about the fifth one the sun is the nearest star to the just now i have discussed with our the next one so the sun is the nearest star the sun is the nearest star what is next over here to the to the so sun is nearest star to the definitely earth so sun is the nearest star to the earth now let's talk about the sixth one light year is the unit of dash light year what is light year light year is the distance one light year if we talk about it is the distance traveled by the light in one year and it is the unit of what like light year light year is the unit of distance in astronomy as the distances are very long and cannot be measured in the smaller units like kilometers and so a different unit has to be taken and which is light year now we'll talk about the seventh fill in the blank the unbent part of a meteor which reaches the earth the unbent part of meteor which reaches the earth now we know what is meteor uh, and what is actually happening with the meteor when meteor is pulled due to gravitational force of the earth it starts coming down and when it starts coming down due to the different layers of the air it, you know it comes in uh, contact of the air and uh, as a speed is the speed of falling of meteors is very high 
and as soon as it enters in the earth's atmosphere the friction is created a lot of friction 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 give rise to heat and light also and most of the part get burned or get evaporated but if the meteors are very big if the meteors are very big then the complete meteors cannot get burned and some part is left which is you know the left part is unburned and this unburned part is known as meteoroids so the seventh one is the unburned the unburned part of a meteor which reaches the earth surface are meteoroids are meteoroids so meteors are the one which you uh, know uh, comes down and come across a lot of friction and it get burned but if the meteors are very big and some part is left and it is unburned and when it comes on the surface of the earth and such kind of part is known as meteoroids now we'll talk about the uh, next one that is the last one now uh, this is the sun is the member of the dash galaxy the sun is the member of which galaxy children milky way or akash ganga milky way galaxy so sun is also the part of the milky way or the akash ganga now these are the fill in the blanks is it over here uh, all the fill in the blanks are also over and now we'll talk about the next question uh, please note all these points all these fill in the blanks and choose the correct answer we'll talk about the next question now